Okay, I've just installed all the Power Commander products uh, on this uh, 2014 KTM Adventure 1190. We've got the entire suite of products on there. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the basic layout of the wiring so uh, you have a better idea of kind of how all this stuff works. Now, what I've done is I've popped the side pot off here and I found a really nice area uh, for all this stuff to live uh, right in here. Um, normally, DinoJet is going to tell you to put everything in here. Uh, but what we found on this bike is uh, there's plenty of room in this side pod. Now, uh, if you've got a standard model, um, I don't think you're going to be able to run everything down in here because uh, I think this is where they put uh, some extra electronics that the standard model has that the R doesn't. So this is an R model, and there's nothing in the side. So there's actually this nice little bracket uh, right here that's uh, kind of ready to go so you can kind of zip tie to this bracket. So I'm going to give you the, the basic layout. and What we've done is uh, we've used 3M VHB double stick tape and I put the auto tune on top of the Power Commander 5 in this configuration so you basically match up these corners right up here and when you do that everything is accessible you can get to the screws uh, for the uh, wide band 02 leads right here uh, from the back side uh, obviously before it's uh, zip tied you can get to those screws you can get to the uh, USB up here you can get to the CAN cables back here. Uh, you can get to the inputs um, back here on the uh, uh, PC5. So when you lay them together in that configuration, uh, you can use some double stick tape and put them together like that permanently and you can, you can access everything. Uh, so what we've done is the, uh, we've put everything in here. It's, it's a really, really clean install. You can see the whole loom of all the products just runs real cleanly along here. There's a couple pieces. This is the uh, the main Power Commander 5 harness and then this is the uh, the quick shifter wire right here that heads off to the left side so I'm gonna walk you through kind of in one take here uh, what we've done and how we did it um, so anyhow uh, we started here we've got the Power Commander 5 and the lead for the Power Commander 5 starts here and we've got it kind of curving around and coming to the right side of the battery now I've got an anti-gravity battery in there so it fits a little bit differently but uh, either way you still have room so the main loom of the power commander kind of runs through here and then disperses itself uh, through the rest of the engine and that most of that is pretty self-explanatory you've got the uh, uh, this is where the uh, power commander 5 gets uh, its power and it tees into the uh, uh, fuel injectors right here uh, it's a real simple install we've done another video on this one but uh, we're just kind of walking you through that and then moving up here you've got your crank reference uh, sensor and then there's just a ground to the battery, and that's really about it on this. Uh, there, you don't have to run any powers. You don't have to find any power that comes on with a key um, because uh, it's, it's all done internally uh, with these. So that's the Power Commander 5. That's a simple part. Now we've got the auto-tune. And everything we have on here, uh, to start from scratch, we've got the Power Commander 5. We've got the auto-tune. We've got a map switch, which is either for, match, uh, for uh, switching between maps or uh, switching auto-tune on and off. Uh, we have a quick shifter. Uh, we have a wire going to the front for um, speed sensors, and then we also have an extra cable um, that we've put on the handlebars. This is where we put the switches, uh, right here and right there, and you can see we haven't mounted the LCD yet, but it's going to mount right there. We're going to have a nice mount that uh, you can purchase that just mounts this right here real easily. Um, but we run an extra switch for the quick shifter. Um, that way we can turn it on and off, because sometimes uh, certain boots... Um, quick shifters don't work very well with big boots because um, you accidentally bump it. Um, and when you're just wearing you know, regular touring shoes or touring boots, uh, you can leave it on and use the quick shifter, which is a really neat uh, function. Um, but usually when you're off-roading, you, you tend to bump the, the shifter a lot more often. You don't want the, uh, the quick shifter enabled. So um, I'll explain that to you in a minute, how we wire that up. So starting with the auto-tune, uh, the auto-tune... Uh, is plugged into the Power Commander 5 and all of our cables by the way every single one of them um, you're gonna find there's a little bit of a loop there's this nice little slot right here in the adventure where you can actually loop all the wires in and out of this thing so if you have a loop that goes out and comes back I just shoved all the loops in there so the loops for both the uh, wideband 02 um, uh, leads which are these guys that loop around up over here they're looped in there the CAN cable that joins the Auto-Tune and the Power Commander 5 together right here is looped in there. Um, 
Every, any, any time you have any excess slack, you can just actually just shove it right in there and it's a really nice little spot. So anyway, the Auto-Tune, uh, we've uh, plugged in the wideband O2s and on this one, um, you can see, let's see if we can get in there, right there we plugged the, uh, the stock um, O2 sensor and then we welded a new one down there on the bottom. You can see it right there. And um, what it does is it matches uh, the length uh, coming out uh, from, the, from the header port um, a little bit better to the front cylinder so you get uh, better AFR readings. Um, and that also kind of hides it down there. So you got to be careful how you measure it. Um, I'm kind of wishing uh, that we angled, uh, let's see if I get in there, we, that we angled it a little bit more that way um, because it, it gets near the swing arm. This installation is fine, uh, but you can see how it's kind of, uh, the direction it's pointing, if you kind of point it more this direction, it'd be a, a better deal. So, uh, note to self. And then on the front, uh, the wideband O2s are a little bit uh, longer uh, than the stock ones, so you don't want to cut these off. Um, you're going to want to run uh, a new your new O2 bungs, and, and we have these really nice stainless ones. Uh, mild steel ones come with the auto-tune kit, but uh, we have these nice stainless ones that are much better. And so we put this a little bit of a different angle. Uh, so it just comes up uh, here right underneath the, uh, uh, the water line right here. So, and we probably could have rolled this in uh, just a little bit more. Uh, but you can, what this allows you to do is go back and forth between stocks. So if you ever, you know, we've capped these off. We also sell these caps. Um, they're 12 millimeter uh, O2 bunk caps. Uh, so we've capped this off and now we're running the, uh, the wideband O2s. We also have caps for the uh, 18 millimeter by 1.5 uh, O2 bunks here. So you can go back and forth and cap this one or cap that one, whatever you need to do. Uh, if, you, if you ever decide you want to take the auto tune off for whatever reason, can't think of that. But anyhow, um, basically the connection cables end up right here on the uh, right hand side of the bike and they're just kind of suspended. I'm probably going to find a better way to hold these uh, later, but uh, you can see them right in here. And those wires trace up the frame right here. So we got the front and rear cylinder um, wide band O2 wires and they come up right through here and then they blend into the to the loom right here real nicely. So they just kind of pop up uh, right underneath all this stuff. And you can see them, uh, I run them right over the two uh, ABS brake lines right here. So those come up and those come around in the loom and then they come back down through the frame here just to the right of the battery and what we've done is, is now they've come back over here same ones and then they plug into the auto tune really nicely right there they'll still do the same thing up here uh, if you've got a standard model and can't fit this stuff in here but uh, right here they fit real nicely and then the, the right where their heat shrunk uh, they kind of tucked into this little crevice uh, right here really nicely so that's the wideband O2 part uh, we've talked about the CAN cables. The CAN cable just kind of runs in this, this little crevice here and then runs back out and joins it to the Power Commander 5. Um, and then uh, what else we've got? We've got, this is how we do um, the quick shifter right here. So basically we, we run one wire um, from the quick shifter uh, lead into the Power Commander 5 and then the second wire we run into uh, this little joint here. That wire then goes up all the way to the handlebars to that switch right there and then the other wire from that switch runs back and then plugs into the other port uh, where the quick shifter would have gone so you basically just left two wires out and then ran those uh, two wires out to the switch so one wire from the quick shifter lead one wire from the uh, the switch lead doesn't matter which one and then the two wires that are left over you just join so what that does is that uh, makes the signals go through the switch uh, so you can turn it on and off. Uh, so that's a little kind of a, a trick that we do. Um, this red wire right here is the speed sensor wire that's run up to the front of the bike. Um, and again, that also runs through this loom uh, right up through here and it runs through the middle of this. We're going to move over to the other side of the bike now. And what we've done is we've tucked the two map switch wires, uh, the quick shifter switch and then the, the auto tune switch and also the, uh, the CAN cable for the LCD screen is run in here. So there's four wires in here and then we just attached it to the inside of the loom right here. Now, you don't have to take off the airbox to do any of this stuff except for the Power Commander 5 you do, but for the Auto-Tune you don't. We've just taken it out because uh, we were uh, removing the SAS system and then uh, it's easier to show you where these wires ran. So those wires kind of run up through here and then uh, 
a couple of them come out. Um, whatever's on, like, I think, uh, let's see if we can get this lit right, yeah. Uh, the CAN cable for the LCD goes up the left-hand side, and then the, uh, the map switch also goes up the left-hand side. And those guys run up right along here, and you just put them in these little rubbers here. And there we have our uh, auto-tune switch or map switch, whatever we use it for. And then right here we've got our uh, LCD. Um, and then moving around to the other switch, we'll show you. This is our uh, quick shifter switch. We've run that uh, right inside this loom here. And that uh, runs down. Let's see if we can, not sure if we can see it, but it's in that loom somewhere. Um, and that runs down, basically down through, through this loom right here, and it runs underneath. Uh, and runs runs down this way. Uh, the other switches the, the, on the uh, left-hand side, they also run on the right-hand side of the bike, but then they cross over through here. So just try to find a nice, a nice uh, uh, empty hole where you can cross it over and then uh, run, up, run up on the other side. Now, the most important part that we're going to talk about is how to power the Auto-Tune. Now, as I mentioned, the Power Commander 5 is powered on its own. You don't have to find any power. Um, but the auto-tune uh, needs to be powered and it needs to be switched powered. Now here's the trick. The, back underneath this seat there are some leads um, that are a ground and a power that's always on and then a ground and a power that's on when, it, when, the, when you turn the key. And these are for accessories. Now on these bikes those are driven by the ECU and uh, big thanks to Kevin in Australia. Um, it's uh, Kev XTX is his, uh, his, his uh, name on the forums. Uh, we've been emailing back and forth on this, and he actually uh, clued me into this before I had to go through the aggravation. You cannot power the auto-tune uh, from the accessory wires. Uh, they are not a constant 12 volts. It's a different kind of 12 volts. Um, so what we've done is we, we have the ground to frame underneath this rubber piece here, and we've angled it down you can see it right here and so we there's a spade connector that comes with the auto-tune kit we crimped that spade on the ground and then uh, screwed it uh, between this rubber piece and the frame right here this is uh, the seat bracket so we, we ran that one there and then we tapped into the red wire on the alarm plug um, using one of these um, uh, quick pin connectors that come with the auto-tune kit as well um, I can't remember what these are called offhand uh, on video here but uh, uh, these are a way to very quickly tap into a wire. There's a little needle that pokes into the wire, um, and then you you tap into it. you run the power wire from the auto tune into this. And so it's the red wire that sits on the uh, alarm here. And we'll tuck this away nicely later. I just left it out so uh, for video purpose so you can see it. So that's how the auto tune is powered right there. Don't use these. They, the auto tune will not work if you use those. Uh, so if you don't have an LCD and you're not data logging, you may think you'd be using this thing, and it's not working. So. Basically, how to find out if your auto-tune is working when you key on the bike. If you reach down and hold this with your hand for a couple of minutes, just leave the bike either not running, just keyed on. Obviously running, it's going to get hot. The key on this should start to get warm, both of them. So just keep your hand on it, and you'll feel it start to get warm. If it's not getting warm, you don't have the right power. So that's the way to check to see if your auto-tune is working properly. Uh... And that's basically how the loom is run. This is most of it. This is most of the system right here. It tucks in very, very nicely. This bike was almost made for it. Um, and then we've got a couple more pieces that have uh, broken out and gone on this side. Again, this is the Power Commander 5 loom and then the, uh, the quick shifter. And this is pretty much everything else that runs along the frame. Uh, and then our O2s, our wideband O2s, are going down and splitting out uh, to the front cylinder, which uh, Power Commander designates this is number one and this is number two which is backwards from the way the QTM does it but uh, you want to plug them in that way and then um, I don't think there's anything I'm forgetting here and then we just basically zip tie it uh, to this nice little bracket right here so we ran one zip tie around the power commander 5 this way and then another one around the top that way and then we, what we did is we ran a little zip tie just around the USB and then we run the USB uh, this is the power cable for the uh, auto-tune, and it just kind of runs up right in here. And then the, um, uh, the USB we've run, and we've just parked it 
uh, right in here. And once this pod's on, you can actually shove this cable back in there. You can put it all back down to where the USB is just sticking out and you can just pull it out when you want it. Um, so that keeps your whole glove compartment nice and clean. Mounts everything nice and clean right there. And if all this looks complicated, it's not. This is, for an amateur to do this, it's, it's quite easy. You just follow the directions. Um, we'll probably have some specific directions later on uh, for this bike just to, just to make it easy for everybody. But most of this stuff is plug and play and you sit down and, and it, it'll probably take about six hours to put all this stuff on, uh, which is not bad. You just take a Saturday, sit down, relax and just move slowly and methodically. Maybe put some Beethoven on the radio and just work your way through the bike and it'll be uh, a perfect system. And we've got some other videos on how to set this stuff up. When you add an auto tune or add a quick shifter or add a map switch, how to go in the computer and enable it and uh, look for those videos as well. But uh, we'll be doing a lot of that stuff. So that's a basic overview of how to put all the uh, uh, DinoJet uh, uh, Power Commander 5 products on the bike. We've got the whole suite running and uh, Looking forward to seeing how this bike works well. So thanks for watching our uh, tutorial and uh, check out our other videos uh, for more information.